Hi everybody, Simon here. I'm going to go Bangkok Chronicles number 14, I think it is today. So, the last time we were covering replica watches and auto parts, and coming back down the road parallel to Yawarat Road in Chinatown, came to the phone section. Now, this year and a half into Bangkok, my wife was start, uh, well, girlfriend at the time was starting to, her English was getting better. She was understanding the system. The phone area, this became a big part uh, for us because um, when we come back to the UK, this is what we went into. Now the phone section, they're all over Bangkok. They're everywhere. There's shopping malls, thousands and thousands of, of phone kiosks and counters selling phones and bits and pieces. But back then, in sort of 2004, 2005, um, the Nokia phones were the big phone at the time and it was the older phone so it was just becoming smartphones and a huge thing in those days was the phones were locked I've done another video on phones um, which I've mentioned but it was become apparent becoming apparent that unlocking phones was a business that potentially to get into now as I we started buying phone accessories to try and sell on eBay we came across the USB cables these were the cable nowadays you get with your phone when you buy your phone but back then you didn't and it was just a phone a cable to link your phone to your computer so you could download your photos and all your bits and pieces um, they were boxed looked pretty um, after checking on eBay there was a profit to be had so we started buying lots and lots of these different USB cables and, and um, for the different phones so many for each phone and we were making about four pound profit on a cable and they were doing really well so as we started visiting this phone section regularly daily in some cases we started mooching around as you do always looking for new products and this one shopping mall which is on the map I've done on my website there we came across an area where there was quite a few people repairing phones but then there were people unlocking phones now we had been buying these cables off this one guy Thai guy um, and I noticed he was constantly unlocking phones and I was trying to see how he was doing it so after talking to him buying off him regularly it was in his interest to sell me this equipment and teach me how to use it all because he was making a profit on it. Um, back then it was things like a super clip so it was a little box, magic box you put, you bought cables specifically for that box to go to the different phones and you just plugged it into the phone, plugged it into the box, press a few buttons voila, phone unlocked and you could charge in those days 10-15 pound a phone to unlock there was quite a few of these clips and there were some that you hooked up to your laptops and did it on the computer. So I learned over the coming two or three months about all the unlocking processes and I started learning how to fix phones. Um, I found myself spending more and more time with this guy, how to change screens and speakers and bits and pieces. Um, and it started to become apparent that there was a business and there was a business back in the UK for me. When we landed, that's what I could get into. So I started investing in some of this equipment and it wasn't huge money, but it, it was sort of a couple of hundred pounds um, for a box with some cables and you needed a few. So I probably spent a couple of thousand pounds over my last six months in Bangkok on phone equipment. The USB cables were selling well. We were doing the pouches, the leather pouches, and they were selling well. And we were still trading to a couple of people that we knew. Um, but yeah, it took a while for those phones to become smartphones over the next few years. So that was became a focus of mine. The handbags were still doing okay. The purses were doing okay. We were doing the Chinese cheap watches still. 
noisy jet. I always pick the wrong time to film. Um, we were doing, I was still sending the jewellers loops. We were still making good money. Um, and the money in the bank was building up. A few people have asked me, if you made all this money, you know, what did you do? Well, as you'll see, Memo and myself decided to, uh, that we were going to get married. We decided that she was going to come to the UK. And then at that point we started with only sort of four months left in Bangkok. I was getting homesick. I sort of made my mind up this phone business was the way to go. The buying and selling, it was wearing thin. We've been doing it for a year. I've been doing it for a year and a half over. Um, yeah, the money was great, but you do get homesick and living in the city, it was hot and sweaty and you do get fed up. You get sort of, maybe it was just me. It was like a two year cycle, two years in the bar, two years in Bangkok. And I'd explored most of Bangkok, uh, the center. I'd obviously gone to night markets and wandered around the outskirts of Bangkok and seen bits and pieces. Plus sometimes at weekend we'd go shoot off down to the beach or somewhere and have a weekend off. But it was getting sort of, uh, I was getting a bit fed up. And I saw the phone idea as the way to get out. So we're coming to the end of the Bangkok Chronicles. Um, there's everything today in 2017, the prices would have changed. Whether you can still do this market, I don't know, because you can go straight to China now with the internet, with something like Alibaba Express. You can buy these goods online, ship them to your own country. You can even sell them directly from there to people. So I don't know if it would still work. You'd have to do a lot of searching to find the right products. But I have friends who, who are doing this today uh, and making money from importing from Bangkok. So it is still possible, but you really have to do your homework and a lot of snooping about. So after a couple of months of further on, the wife and I decided we're, we're gonna get married. We looked at all the process. And we looked at all the um, ways of what visas we needed and everything. And that's when we started the, the process. It became apparent that the embassy back in those days, they liked you to take a certain route. So tourist visa first, then you come back, get a, a visa to get married in your own country or get married in Thailand, settlement visa and so forth. So we had to start planning this. Um, we carried on with the buying and selling. The football equivalent shirts were doing okay, but there was nothing major that we could buy a lot of export to the UK and then when we landed we could carry on selling it. There was a few things that I did carry on buying in Bangkok and if you've got a contact there you can get them to buy it and send it to you. And that's what we did later on is I got my wife's sister to drive up to Bangkok, buy certain items, post them to us and we, we did sell for a while afterwards. But we've covered most areas of Bangkok on the mainly Chinatowns, where everything is, and the different markets. There are new markets popping up all the time, new shopping centres. MBK, as I said, Morbacong. I used to go there a lot for the phones, but you also see all the new goods coming out there as well. Plus the Pat Pong night market was a good spot. I'd bought some replica watches for myself and I'd been posting them back home. Um, I'd, I'd been posting bits and pieces but when it came to the visa process and how I would do all that, that got expensive. That's where it started getting expensive. So coming towards the end of my two years, Bangkok, it was time. I had to fly back to the UK to sort out accommodation, paperwork, what things I'd need, and also line up some work. And that's where I um, got back into the taxi in. So I had to line myself a car up and a taxi and get everything sorted. So I did, I flew on my own. I left Mem in the condo, back to the UK, set everything up. It took me a couple of months. 
putting some money together, putting all the things in place, off I went back to Bangkok and uh, did the tourist visa process, which I've done, I'm sure I've done some videos on. We made a tourist visa for me and Mem. And at that point we gave up the condo. That was the end of the Bangkok Chronicles. We gave the condo up. We left some stuff with Somchai, the letting agent for the condo, because we were gonna come back for another probably month before we got married. So we left some stuff there. And we got the visa and headed to the UK. Um, a six month visa was granted. So landing back in the UK, got the taxi sorted out. And then it was a case of <laughs> teaching Mem English, acclimatizing her for the UK and uh, going through lots of different things. But maybe, I'm sure I've done some videos on that anyway, taking your partner back to your country. Check back in the catalog. We did the six months. Uh, Mem couldn't work because of the visa restrictions. She couldn't, there was no recourse to public funds. She couldn't work. We had the six months. I worked hard on the taxi, made some money. Plus all the money we'd made in Bangkok. We, we put, I think we actually sent about 10,000 uh, pound to the UK and about the same left in Bangkok. And that was gonna pay for the wedding, the settlement visa, the honeymoon, and everything else to do with the marriage. Um, so over the two years, made some good money, spent some good money <laughs> in enjoying yourself. And then the traveling costs and things and visas, that soon mounts up to, to larger money. And yeah, after six months, we went back to Bangkok <clears throat> we had our condo for a month. We cleared everything there. We posted the load back to the UK. We went round one last buying trip, buying lots and bits and pieces. And I bought some more phone equipment for unlocking. And we bought quite a bit of phone stock with cases and things we thought we're gonna set some sort of shop up in the UK. So we, we shipped a load back. And then off we went through the process of getting married and, and all the rest of it. Again, that's different videos. But that really wraps up the Bangkok Chronicles. Um, I hope you enjoyed the series. So it's been sort of 14, 15 videos. Gives you an insight to what can be done uh, in Bangkok. You could easily set a business up there, get the work permit in the export market, I'm sure. And... Uh, potentially earn good money. It's the same in, in the buying and selling, import, export. You can do it from anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere in the world and do it. It's just always finding that magical product, which I never found. I never found the item I bought for £10, sold for 100 It was elusive. <laughs> but I had a great time. Those two years were a wonderful time. Um, and I recommend anyone to spend some time in Bangkok. When you're holidaying, you, you don't really want to be in Bangkok too long, but if you get a chance to actually go and live there for a few months, it's an amazing city, absolutely amazing, and the people are wonderful. Really good place. So, uh, any more questions, again, drop in the box below, or email me, landersmilesthailand at gmail.com. And I'll try and answer your questions. And what's the next series I'm going to do? Well, I haven't decided yet. We've still got the Drowning Love love story going on. I've got to wrap my brains and think about what you'd like next. If you've got any ideas, again, pop a comment in below. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'll catch you soon on another video. Bye for now.